Hey guys, today let's learn about female sterilization, which is tubectomy or the tubal sterilization. So it is a permanent method of contraception. Here the tubal ligation can be done at any time. And postpartum sterilization, it is tubal sterilization done within first week of delivery. Here the patient is still hospitalized, you can go with this procedure. Interval sterilization, here the patient should be a non-pregnant woman and preferably done after the six weeks of the delivery. So then you can call it as interval sterilization, preferably after the menses to avoid the pregnancy in the post ovulatory period. So what are the indications? It, it should be done for the multiparous woman and it's a permanent family planning method. And a woman who have undergone three C-sections and high risk pregnant women and psychiatric problems, breast cancer, eugenic, all related to the fetal malformations like any syndromic, hemophilia, RH incompatibility, Wilson's disease, Marfan syndrome, Tay-Sachs disease, you can go with this female sterilization procedure. Contraindications are young females less than 25 years of age and parity less than 2 and lo any local infection present. You, it should be contraindicated. What are the methods? There are 5 methods basically. Laparotomy, mini laparotomy, vaginal root, laparoscopy root and hysteroscopy root. Laparotomy. Here the Pomeroy's method, Madlinus method, Irving's, Aldrich, Cornwall resection, Uchida method, fimbriectomy are there. In mini laparotomy also you can go with the Pomeroy's, Madlina, Aldrich method, Uchida method and fimbriectomy. Vaginal root, laparoscopic root, silastic ring, bipolar cauteries and filchy clips you can use here. In hysteroscopy, we can go with the chemical agents and issues. So these are the main five methods for the female sterilization. So this laparotomy can be done during the C-section or any general gynecological surgery. Mini laparotomy. Here we give a small incision of 2.5 centimeters in length. It should be routinely done and mata and it can be done in a smaller setup like a PHC center. Pomeroy's method. What is Pomeroy's method? Here the first incision should be given and fallopian tube should be brought out. Then the middle portion of the fallopian tube is held with the Babcock's forceps. Then a small loop of the fallopian tube should be tied at the base with the catgut sutures. Then the portion between the tied part should be excised. Okay, here the Pomeroy's method, the failure rate is 0.4% because there can be a spontaneous recanalization can be there and it can be done in the PHC. It is a reversible procedure. So you can commonly use this Pomeroy's method. And then what is Madlinus operation here? A loop, loop of the fallopian tube should be crushed and it should be ligated with a non-absorbable suture. Okay, then what is about Irving method here? Also the mid portion is ligated and intervening portion should be excised. But here the difference is the proximal end of the fallopian tube should be buried into the myometrium of the uterus and distal end of the fallopian tube should be buried into the broad ligament and it is a irreversible procedure. This Irving method, IR, irreversible. So remember like that. And coming, coming to the cornwall resection, here the cornwall portion of the fallopian tube should be resected and the risk factor is uterus can bleed on mata. So this is about cornwall resection. Then fimbriectomy. What is fimbriectomy? Here we excise the fimbria part of the fallopian tube. So pregnancy is not possible. So it's a permanent sterilization and it is not reversible. This is about fimbriectomy. And what is Uchida method? In Uchida method also, we'll, wh what we do is tubal cirrhosa is stripped from the muscularis layer of the fallopian tube and then the mid, mid segment of the fallopian tube is excised. And the proximal end is to be buried into the broad ligament after you ligate it. Okay, then tuboplasty can be done here in the Uchida method. So this is the mini laparotomy procedures. What are the procedures? Pomeroy's, Madlinus, Irving's, Cornwall resection, fimbriectomy, and Uchida method. Then third method is vaginal, vaginal tubal ligation. Here also the patient should lie in a lithotomy position and pouch of Douglas is opened and fallopian tube should be hooked out with our fingers or any backcock forceps and matter. The risk is pelvic infection and failure rate is common. And this vaginal tubal ligation can be combined with the Manchester operation or the Fothergill's operation which is done for the prolapse of the uterus. Here in Manchester repair we will do cervical amputation where the uterus cervical length is increased we will do the cervical amputation and the cardinal ligament should be attached anteriorly to the cervix. Okay, This is about the third procedure that is vaginal tubal ligation but this is not commonly done because of the risks that is pelvic infection talk about laparoscopic sterilization. Laparoscopic sterilization is the fourth method of the female sterilization process. 
it should be done under the local anesthesia or general anesthesia a small sub umbilical incision should be given then create a pneumoperitoneum with co2 and by using a viris needle co2 is safer than air and entovo because if you use air and entovo there is a risk of air embolism and accidental explosion then keep the patient in the head lobe position then insert a trocar and the cannula now remove the trocar and now insert a operating laparoscope now create illumination by using a fiber optic light then manipulate the uterus from the below so that you have to bring the fallopian tube in the center for the better visualization now for the each fallopian tube pick up near the isthmic end and do clipping or bandage or cauterization of the segment clipping you can go with the filji hulka clips and banding with the elastic bands and cauterization of the segment with the bipolar cautery preferably bipolar cautery is used not a monopolar cautery because if you use monopolar there is a risk of recanalization then after clipping or banding you have to allow the gas to escape out of the peritoneum and then remove the all the instruments give a subcuticular stitch so that your procedure has ended now this elastic ring is also called as fallop ring it destroys 2 to 3 cm of the fallopian tube fallop ring is a elastic band it has outer ring and inner ring outer ring is 3.6 mm in diameter inner ring is 1 mm in diameter and it has thickness of 2.2 mm so it preferably destroys more portion that is 2 to 3 cm of the fallopian tube and it has in, it is impregnated with the barium sulfate this barium sulfate is used for the radiological visualization of the elastic ring then hulka and fish uh, hulka and fishy clips they are they'll destroy the smaller segment of the fallopian tube that is 3 to 4 mm whereas elastic ring 2 to 3 centimeters so this hulka or the fishy clips can be reversible then laparoscopy advantages what are the advantages small sub umbilical incision is given so small scar which is invisible and it can be done under the local anesthesia and it's a opd procedure and highly reversible and success rate is 70 percent then what are the disadvantages it's a expensive equipment is needed maintenance is not easy and requires experience personal and mortality is common what are the complications complications are more common if it is done under the inexperienced person's hands abdominal wall emphysema because you will inject the gas no so abdominal wall emphysema and bleeding because with a trocar cannula you can injure a superior epigastric vessel so bleeding is common tearing of the mesosalpings and bleeding and uterine perforation and wrong application of the rings you can apply uh, to the round ligament or mesosalpings or the uterovarian ligament so wrong application and failure rate is common and spontaneous recanalization can be there and ectopic pregnancy can occur and hydrosalping formation can be there so these are the complications abdominal wall emphysema bleeding tearing of the mesosalpings and the bleeding uterine perforation wrong application failure rate spontaneous recanalization ectopic pregnancy and hydrosalpings formation then what are the contraindications where you can't do this procedure cardiac and pulmonary diseases if cardiac and pulmonary diseases are present co2 and the head low positions are contraindicated and previous abdominal surgeries if previous abdominal surgery is there there is a risk of intestinal trauma and parietal adhesions can be present and puerperal cases here the fallopian tube is edematous and vascular so it can be torn and uterus it is soft so there is easy perforation risk and what is the other complicated contraindication extreme obesity and diaphragmatic umbilical hernia if they are present you should not do this procedure and in pid pelvic inflammatory disease here the fallopian tube has got many adhesions violent string adhesions you have learned no so here you can you cannot visualize the fallopian tube clearly so you should be contraindicated and skin infection anemia and the thrombophlebitis so these are the cases where you have to contraindicate the female sterilization procedure so what are they cardiac pulmonary diseases previous abdominal surgery puerperal cases extreme obesity diaphragmatic umbilical hernias pid skin infection anemia and thrombophlebitis and then coming to the fifth procedure that is hysteroscopic sterilization here you use a hysteroscope and with a chemical agent and or you use some plug in the cornual portion of the fallopian tube so you you will block the corner portion of the fallopian tube so it can't go into the uterine cavity earlier we use instead of chemical agents we have used sclerosing agents sclerosing agents like quinacrin but here the complications are more like uterine perforation burns and infections are there so now sclerosing agents are not used now we'll go with the chemical agents and plugs then what is a assured contraceptive de device this is a hysteroscopic 
method of contraception okay assure contraceptive device it's a dynamically expanding micro inserter this assure contraceptive device is a permanent device and it has got inner coil and outer coil flexible inner coil and dynamic outer coil this inner coil is made of stainless steel and outer coil is made up of nickel titanium okay and in the inner coil we have pet fibers what are these pet fibers they are polyethylene terephthalate fibers and these fibers if if you insert this assure contraceptive device in the cornual portion of the fallopian tube through a hysteroscope now you will cause a benign local fibrosis fibrosis tissue growth this pet fibers will cause benign local fibrous tissue growth there and this will occlude the fallopian tube and this process will take around 3 months so you have to use other contraceptive device till this 3 months and now after after 3 months you have to do a hysterosalpingography to confirm the blockage of the tube okay and this issue device should be passed through a guide wire into the fallopian tube and this procedure is irreversible and permanent method okay kerin devised this assure contraceptive device pet fibers these pet fibers that is polyethylene terephthalate fibers they have no chemical peritonitis it will not cause any chemical peritonitis whereas sclerosing agents will cause chemical peritonitis so we are not using sclerosing agents now now to protect the tubal spasms if if any tubal spasms are there you can use buscopan and nsaids to prevent the tubal spasms and for the optimal placement of this assured contraceptive device you have to span the utero utero tubal junction and device should be placed far away from the cornua so that it can be blocked now the uh, some portion of the device should trail into the uterine cavity some like 4 to 8 8 coils can be trail into the uterine cavity so this is about the assure contraceptive device that is through hysteroscopy and what are the disadvantages of this method because here the hysteroscopy should be used and it is cost ex and experience personal should be needed and it's a permanent method because it's not reversible and hysterosalpingogram should be needed to confirm the tubal blockage and 3 months of uh, waiting should be there and bilateral insertion if it it is difficult because of the spasm of the fallopian tube and tuboplasty for the reversal is not possible if you want any reversal reversal procedure tuboplasty can be should be done but it's not possible here and perforation of the tube can be present so these are the disadvantages and what are the advantages there is no scar and it can be done under the local anesthesia what are the complications and sequelae of the female sterilization procedure what are the final complications of all the procedures here anesthesia complications can be there mortality can be there because of the hemorrhage sepsis and embolism and morbidity can be there because of lung infection abdominal wound sepsis and peritonitis and trauma trauma to the bladder and bowel because of the laparoscopic procedure and uh, thrombophlebitis embolism can be there because puerperal steril in the puerperal sterilization and pelvic adhesions can be there failure rate and ectopic pregnancy abnormal uterine bleeding here the etiology is unknown but it can occur and regret and depression depression can be there to the mother so these are the complication anesthesia related mortality morbidity trauma to the bladder and bowel thrombophlebitis embolism pelvic adhesions failure rate ectopic pregnancy aubs and depression to the mother and then what is merina and how it is different from the tubectomy merina can be done in the young woman to avoid the per permanent contraception this female sterilization process is a permanent method no here you can use merina in a young woman to avoid this permanent contraception and what are the indications where you use merina in heavy menstrual bleeding dysmenorrhea pelvic endometriosis adenomyosis and myoma you can go with the merina this merina and tubectomy both are equally effective and merina is reversible and tubectomy is surgically reversible and bleeding and dysmenorrhea is less in merina and menstrual bleeding can be more in the tubectomy it is a cheaper procedure merina is a cheaper and costly is tubectomy and no surgery and anesthesia complications in merina surgery and anesthesia complications can be there in the tubectomy and ectopic pregnancy is less ectopic pregnancy can be increased in the tubectomy and ovarian function is not compromised if you use merina tubectomy here the ovarian function can be compromised so this is about the female sterilization procedure thank you